Thank you. Thank you, Myra. Um, and thank you, Plymouth Church. We are really honored and thrilled to be your neighbor. And we have moved into our new facility that was constructed over the um, winter, summer, and fall of this past year. We opened our doors about four weeks ago and have been seeing patients since November 23rd, which um, is a, a five year in the making project that has come to fruition through profound community partnerships and really the, the power of people, including many, many Plymouth Church members. So again, we're just really grateful to be here. I, I'm gonna ask that Deborah share screen and we can start our presentation for this morning. Perfect, thank you, Deborah. So we love to start with just a brief introduction of Family Tree. Um, and this picture is just a, a really a great way to showcase the, the broad and intersectional community of Family Tree. This was us three years ago now at the Pride Parade. So um, included here are staff members, their children, board members, volunteers, patients who joined us to march down Hennepin Avenue to um, convey our pride and our commitment to Family Tree's mission. We uh, stand on the shoulders of giants and um, I think we have folks here who, who have known about Family Tree probably since our founding. We were founded in 1971. Our co-founder Carla Ekdahl as well as John Beatty were um, rooted in the Mac Groveland community in St. Paul um, and actually Family Tree came out of a need identified through McAllister College and community members for affordable, accessible, and dignified reproductive health care. And so out of that seed, Family Tree was founded. And now in our 50th year, we are a regional resource for sexual health care, gender affirming hormone care, which we'll talk about more, and robust comprehensive sexuality education services, as well as education programming proven to reduce sexual violence and increase consent in healthy relationships. Family Tree is really a community. Um, and I think this frame really connects us to Plymouth Church in a deep way. We are a community cleverly disguised as a clinic because our approach to healthcare is really about creating an environment that sets the stage for inclusive healthcare for everyone. And we do that by centering people who experience the most marginalization and discrimination in our healthcare system, centering the solutions that they know work for health equity, and then out of that, the environment is inclusive for everyone. So by taking a targeted universalism approach, which really centers folks most pushed to the margins, everyone experiences better health care. And that is our community frame towards health equity. I wanted to share some pictures from our founding as we went through the process of moving from our St. Paul clinic just a few weeks ago, we were going through an archival box of photographs. So these are photos from, excuse me, the original Family Tree Clinic in 1971. And boy, we have come a long way. This is our medical director, Dr. Dale Hammerschmidt in 1971, who was a conscientious objector in the um, Vietnam War and served as uh, Family Tree's founding medical director. This was our lab. <laughs> and then this was some press celebrating the opening of Family Tree at 1599 Selby Avenue in St. Paul. Fast forward 50 years, here is some recent press from MinPost um, celebrating the opening of the new Family Tree Clinic. So again, we are just across the street from Plymouth Church. And I should note that um, we are relocated, as Myra mentioned, to one of our largest patient growth zip codes. A community health needs assessment that we conducted really indicated profound opportunity for Family Tree's specific mission to have a deep impact in this neighborhood. And uh, because we also draw patients from a seven state upper Midwest region in Canada, parking, uh, mass transit and centrally located to major highways was a critical component of our uh, evaluation of where to move the clinic. And so thank you to Plymouth Church 
We bought an accessory parking lot from you that's located right next to our building that allows us to ensure that our patients traveling from across the upper Midwest have access to parking right next to our building. And ultimately, just as it was in 1971, Family Tree is a people powered organization. So this is a picture of one of our amazing uh, former staff who's now moved on to become a marriage and family therapist, Sarah Lentz, one of our volunteers standing alongside her again at the Pride Parade three years ago. And our staff moving weekend. So when we were moving into our clinic just four weeks ago, this is a group of staff who, um, boy, worked harder <laughs> than any executive director should ever ask staff to work <laughs> to make this move into our new facility happen in just three short days. We didn't miss a beat in terms of patient care. And again, we've been fully operational seeing patients for just shy of four weeks now. I do wanna just take a minute to really describe what Family Tree does, because as we think about the critical connections that form a health equity framework, Family Tree's approach is really about knitting education services, culturally responsive services for folks most on the margins, exceptional medical care, and ultimately a systems change approach to what that means. So we deliver education services in elementary schools, middle schools, high schools. We have the largest comprehensive sexuality education programming in the juvenile detention centers. So contracts with both Hennepin and Ramsey County to work with young folks in the juvenile detention systems. We also have a culturally specific program for the deaf, deaf, blind, and hard of hearing. So this department works by and for deaf folks to ensure that our deaf community has access to comprehensive sexuality education programming, medical care, as well as working with um, deaf folks with intersectional identities. So we have a support group for deaf transgender individuals. We have a targeted education program for deaf parents to work with their children around being um, safe and tellable adults for consent, sexuality, um, healthy relationships, internet safety. Our other culturally responsive programming centers on the um, importance of an LGBTQ inclusive medical environment. So really recognizing that historically LGBTQ people have faced profound discrimination and barriers in healthcare. And Family Tree has worked really hard over the last 15 years to create both a clinical and educational environment that is um, honoring and celebrating of our LGBTQ community. And through the changes we've made to make our medical care more inclusive, we have really learned that those changes benefit everyone. So we're excited to celebrate that centering LGBTQ community benefits all of us to receive better care. And of course, our medical services are uh, leading and award-winning across the region for our model of inclusive medical care. We provide, <clears throat> excuse me, a whole host of preventive reproductive health care, basic primary care, as well as a regional leading gender-affirming hormone care program uh, serving our transgender community. And then finally, we run the statewide family planning and STD hotline. So this is a grant funded program through the Minnesota Department of Health to create access to information and clinic referrals from trained uh, educators via text, phone, web chat, and video chat as well. And we actually receive calls from around the world. Um, just the other day, someone in Britain contacted us to get information about herpes. Um, this is something that so many people would fear talking to their medical provider about. And through this confidential hotline, we're really able to address uh, what can often be highly stigmatized um, and very common healthcare experiences in a very safe and inclusive confidential environment. And ultimately, we believe that the model of care that is going to best serve our statewide goals for health equity, centers people of many identities who have so much lived experience and expertise around what isn't working in our traditional healthcare system. 
So Family Tree serves a high population of people who have experienced intimate partner violence, LGBTQ folks, people who face barriers to insurance. About 35% of our patients are entirely uninsured. The deaf, deaf, blind, hard of hearing community, people of color and immigrants, folks who experience homelessness, people who are incarcerated or have been. These are just some of the many identities that Family Tree's patients and community hold that really ultimately inform a model of care that is moving the needle on health equity. We are um, serving a patient community unlike any other community clinic because of the intersectional identities. So 55% of our patients identify as members of the LGBTQ community. 67% of our patients identify as women. 45% as black indigenous and people of color. And over 70% live at or below the poverty level. And as I mentioned, we are drawing patients from a seven state upper Midwest region in Canada, particularly in our gender affirming hormone care program. So we have patients who travel from Winnipeg, Cedar Rapids, Chicago, North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska. The most common patient feedback we receive is I feel safe here. That is a profound experience for people who have faced outrageous barriers and lack of safety in healthcare. And so to be creating an environment ultimately rooted in our patient's expertise results in that experience of safety. And it's actually demonstrated through other patient outcomes as well. Nearly 85% of our patients in our gender affirming hormone care program experience a reduction in suicidal ideation and depression resulting from access to safe, inclusive, dignified, and really exceptional medical care. I'm free in my own body for the first time because of the care I received at Family Tree Clinic is something that a patient wrote um, after having their first gender affirming hormone care visit with Family Tree. And that journey is something that we are so grateful and honored and really reverent to be a part of walking alongside our patients in their journey to autonomy. That's what this healthcare is about. Because we are a deliverer of robust reproductive and sexual health care, and we've described who our community is, we wanted to just share directly the voice of one patient, Miriam, describing her experience at Family Tree. I've seen ISIS come into my own hometown and I've seen people getting killed and getting beaten up because they are who they are. And like you're not welcomed and you're gonna die if you're gay, if you're lesbian, if you get pregnant without getting married, if you get STDs, if you they don't even they don't even wanna listen. You're just gonna get killed or you're just gonna get kicked out of there. So the first day I made it to America, I was like there must be something that will happen that would make me realize that I should stay here and stick to this place and hold on to Minnesota. And Family Tree Clinic is one of those things. Now I know that I want to hold on forever. <laughs> yeah. One special thing about Miriam's story is that she um, has not only stayed connected to Family Tree as a patient, she also became a volunteer. Um, and she has gone on to pursue a master's degree in public health, in part because of just the experience that she had um, being a, a, a patient and a partner in care at Family Tree. I have tracked a couple of the Q&A questions and, and Myra, I know we'll have time at the end for Q&A and I, I really just wanted to acknowledge, I appreciate those questions so much and we will absolutely address those. Because we're not able to today go across the street from Plymouth and take you on an actual tour of the Family Tree Building, we wanted to take you on about a six minute virtual tour of the facility and then in the hopes that someday soon, we will be able to uh, walk you through our real building. But this should give you a sense of what the actual clinic is like. So 
So first, and you all are very familiar with this neighborhood, this locates family tree at the intersection of Franklin and Nicollet. And this is a beautiful rendering that looks very much like the real building that is now constructed across the street. Because this is a virtual tour, we're now turning into virtual people. <laughs> and we're walking across a very not busy Nicollet Avenue, which we all know is not true. <laughs> and we're walking into the new family tree building. This is a placeholder mural that you're seeing on the side that actually this spring will be painted by a group of BIPOC uh, muralists in the neighborhood. The, that mural actually brings us into this welcome atrium filled with natural light and it will wrap around this interior wall. And as we're in the atrium, um, you know, I just wanna acknowledge that we'll be able to reach 33,000 people a year out of this new facility. Folks who will experience this bright and vibrant um, setting filled with natural light and views of the outdoors. The whole first floor of the Family Tree Clinic building is really uh, geared towards a community center type of layout. So our clinic is on the second floor. The first floor allows us to have lots of open space. We're getting a look at our boardroom here. Um, this is the John Sullivan boardroom. I don't know if there's any folks with us who know John Sullivan. He's a co-chair of our capital campaign, a board governance expert. Um, and we've been able to acknowledge his tremendous commitment through the naming of the boardroom in his honor. We're getting a view of a uh, healing garden patio that um, folks who come into the building have access to in the spring. We'll have medicinal herbs and landscaping. Um, this community lounge and living room is a place where, you know, our myriad community partners are able to share in our space, connect with our staff. Um, and we really look forward to opening this up as almost a uh, community hall. So we would invite Plymouth Church to think about what opportunities might you like to host meetings in the family tree space. We're moving uh, down the hall and into our community kitchen and the people's meeting room on our left made possible by um, Grace University Lutheran Church. The community kitchen is a beautiful space for our staff to have breaks. Again, it connects to that healing garden patio we know that our um, medical providers are working so hard and a part of the critical commitment to them is to ensure that this space offers rest and respite. It's also a place where programming happens. So some of our youth programming centers food, nutrition, um, really thinking about how to knit together um, the leadership skills of both preparing healthy meals for yourself and then also um, taking care of your body through access to healthcare. Moving up the stairs, um, we have an elevator and stairs that take us right up to the second floor where the clinic is located. <laughs> it's so funny to see this in virtual form. This is really the vibrant color of those stairs. Perhaps you've seen it through the windows um, across the street from Plymouth. As we're walking up the stairs, um, you can start to really you know, see just this kind of oasis model of um, the clinic experience. So having the clinic located on the second floor allows us to still have that view of the outside and natural light, but a little more privacy and sense of oasis. The mural behind the front desk is not this, but there is a mural behind the front desk uh, by a young Somali artist named Hibak Ibrahim. As we centered thousands of uh, patient feedback surveys, as well as listening sessions to design this building in a trauma-informed way, patients conveyed that criticality of representational art. So we've ensured that through the murals and other artwork, we're really conveying a sense of belonging, as well as the views to the outside and natural light, and then ease of wayfinding. So as we walk you through the real building, we will certainly point out all the different ways that that trauma-informed design has come through, but I will highlight a few things in this virtual tour. Just the simplicity of the design and that the hallways and corridors are on the outside of the building so that you really do have views out the entire time. There is one turn to get you to all of the exam rooms off of this main hall. And all of the hallways are connected by windows. Even the exam rooms have small windows that have a privacy film on them as well as blinds, but to let in natural light and just really convey 
a sense of um, safety and confidentiality while giving people that celebration of natural light. We'll get a view of the lab. Our lab is something we're very proud of. All of our med staff were involved in designing it. Um, it really allows our capacity for um, demonstrating outcomes through the evidence-based services that we do to grow. This back area is where our med staff team have their workstations, tons of access to natural light for them as well. And really having this open office space allows our med staff teams to work in collaboration hubs, thinking about a collaborative approach to centering patient care. So we have nurses, physicians, nurse practitioners, medical assistants, patient resources navigators who all work together in hubs to create the kind of holistic care that our patients need and deserve from us. Another open office space for some additional staff, billing, advancement, our hotline staff. And then coming back out, you get a little view of a skylight. There's a beautiful skylight over this big stair, just really bringing in uh, light right into the center of the building. When MinPost and Star Tribune referred to the family tree as kind of a oasis and a beacon, um, gosh, it's just really, an experience when you're in this facility of, of a place that you belong, that you deserve, that you are safe and seen in, um, and that you're celebrated. And that really is an oasis um, that we want everyone to experience when they come through this clinic. Now we're just walking our virtual selves back outside, this beautiful mural that will be installed this spring. Get a load of that parking, <laughs> what a gift. <laughs> And this is the virtual experience of the, the family tree facility. So thank you for going on that virtual tour with us. And then I'm gonna turn it over to our amazing director of advancement, Deborah Denoyles, who is gonna talk a little bit more about the kind of poised for systems change work happening at family tree, as well as um, some ways that you might consider helping or getting more involved, Deborah. I'm going to stop my share. And thank you so much. Uh, Myra, thank you for the introduction. And Plymouth, I want to start by saying thank you for your partnership. Uh, I started at Family Tree in December of last year. So I just passed my one year anniversary. And um, every contact that I've had in that year with congregants with staff has been remarkable. Uh, Jackie Trelawney, who is the Director of Community Engagement at Family Tree Clinic, and I met with some staff, I want to say in April of this year. And at the end of it, Jackie and I stayed on the Zoom meeting and said, have you ever met people who were so ready to partner? So thank you for that. It's, it's been a wonderful, fruitful partnership, and we look forward to growing that. One thing that I want to talk a little tiny bit about is some very exciting news. So I'm just going to, I'm going to actually pull up my press release that's going to be dropped tomorrow. So you're getting a sneak peek of it. Alyssa talked a little bit about our gender affirming hormone care and how it has been in it an area of tremendous growth for Family Tree Clinic and an area of tremendous need where we've seen the greatest wait lists. The news that go, comes out tomorrow is that the Bush Foundation has awarded Family Tree Clinic a community innovation grant of $757,000 to be used over the course of five years to develop a replicable, replicable model for training providers that will enable transgender and non-binary people to receive gender affirming care in their own home communities in outstate Minnesota, South Dakota, North Dakota, and the native regions that share that geography. We are so very excited about this. Just this week, Natalie Crowley, who is our Director of People and Culture, said, we show that graphic, that map all the time of people driving for so long to come to Family Tree. We're proud to be a destination clinic. We're proud to offer the kind of care that makes people come to us. We don't want anyone to have to go five hours to see good quality care. 
And so the John Sullivan boardroom that you just saw on the tour is actually a magnificent dedicated space that we can use because we've, we've built it to be completely wired to do telementorship. We will be creating a network of providers all across the region to um, work hand in hand to develop networks of care that really support trans and non-binary individuals to get care in their own communities. It's exciting, it's powerful, and it's the kind of systems change work that we are most proud of. And we're clearing wait lists, which is what we want to do more than anything. So I'm, I'm thrilled to share that news with you. It's, it's exciting and it's hot off the presses, literally. <laughs> so that's something we're very, very proud of. The other thing that I, of course, want to talk about, because as the director of advancement, I carry the message. I move around messages and money. That's all I do. <laughs> and I, I want to share two tiny little anecdotes. One was I got a call about two months ago from someone who said, I want to give money to Family Tree. And of course I say, great, uh, how did you hear about us? And she said, I am a parent of a child who is going through transition. I said, that's great. She said, I'm a medical researcher. So I did a lot of research and right away I learned I'm in a great place for this. So I went to the U of M which has a fantastic space. Uh, they said, we'd love to help your child. It's about a four year wait. My child is already in puberty. They don't have four years. What should I do? U of M said, Children's is doing great things. Go to Children's. She said, I called Children's. I had great referrals for Children's. Children said, we'd be happy to help you, but it's gonna be about eight months to get in. I was at my wits end and actually posted on Facebook and social media, who knows someone who could help. And several of my friends said, have you tried Family Tree Clinic? I called Family Tree Clinic and explained the situation. And the person at the desk said, I'm sorry, we also have a wait. We won't be able to see your child for two weeks. <laughs> I burst into tears. I'm so grateful. My child is able to live an authentic life because of the care they've received at Family Tree Clinic. When you work in this area of health, you hear stories like that every day and you're gratified by the work that you do. I'm so grateful to be nourished by our community partners, by our patient stories, by our amazing staff. I am a, a Latina who grew up in Kansas and Oklahoma. Between my, my partner and I, we have four children. Um, and among those four children, one's gay, one's queer, two we're waiting to see. <laughs> and I just, I think back to my own childhood and what a difference a clinic like this would have made in my life or for my family's life when I was growing up. I'm so proud, proud, proud to be a part of this organization. And I'm especially proud that as Alyssa said, this is a people powered organization. And that is how our capital campaign has gone as well. So we started out five years ago and um, I just learned recently, we're told in a feasibility study that the most we could probably raise was be about 1.6 million. Well, I'm happy to report the number is $6,848,141 raised. Over 400 individuals have donated to this campaign. We have an $8 million goal, so we're about 1.1 million shy. And we're going to wrap up the campaign this spring. I'm not asking anybody on this call to, to fill that gap, although feel free if you'd like. But what I'd love is for our partners who know what this place means, who've learned a little bit, I'd like people to think about. Who are the bold leaders that you know that would want to be part of this? This is an amazing space that's transforming lives and is moving the needle on healthcare equity. And don't we need that? Haven't we learned that in the past two years? Healthcare equity really matters. I'd love to talk to you at any time about 
taking a tour of our gorgeous building. Um, if you'd like to donate, I can make that super easy for you. Or if you just want to know more or introduce this project to other people, send me an email. I, it's, it's really easy to find the named Noyles, I can guarantee you. But I'm, I'm on the website and I'd love to talk to anybody and everybody about the impact that this project is going to have in our community. So that's it from me. I'm, I'm grateful and maybe we'll open it up for questions now. Shall I read the, I can read the questions if you'd like. Okay. That'd be great. The, okay. The first question is from John Humphrey. Could you please give an example of how you have changed medical care for some of your specific communities and how it has benefited broader scale medical care? Yes. I loved seeing that question. Thank you so much, John. Um, and I think Deborah spoke to it a bit by the uh, trust and investment from the Bush Foundation for our systems change work to launch <clears throat> and expand our telementorship. Um, but a couple of the um, opportunities we've had over the last five years to participate in medical training of students has been a really profound way to create kind of the seeds of systems change towards the broader um, good of healthcare. So in um, 2017, we launched the first ever LGBT medical elective in partnership with the University of Minnesota Med School. And then also in 2017, we worked with the University of Minnesota School of Nursing and School of Nurse Midwifery to launch a simulation program. Simulation is a, um, a significant way that students who are working their way towards becoming medical providers gain those experiential skills. The simulation program that we were able to launch centers on LGBTQ inclusive care. And it actually became a part of the Journal of Nurse Midwifery's um, national uh, promotion of how to create the um, context for learning inclusive healthcare skills so that when you move into your professional roles as medical providers, you're not learning on your patients. So the simulation program in partnership with the University of Minnesota Nursing School and the LGBT medical elective in partnership with the med school are really inspiring ways that um, Family Tree gets to be a partner in training the future of our healthcare workforce towards equity and inclusion. Another example that, that Deborah shared is the Bush grant. And I wanted to just um, lift up a couple concrete examples of what that Bush uh, grant is going to achieve. So, um, Two years ago, Family Tree was able to partner with a clinic in Duluth and then a clinic in Fargo. And we worked with their providers through what we really, we think of as relational mentorship to train them in our gender affirming hormone care protocols. So just the hard skills of learning how to prescribe hormones and work with clients who want to achieve transition. And then the ongoing mentorship critical for providers to both grow their medical skills and caring for the diverse range of needs that many patients will present related to goals around gender transition and affirmation. And um, to do that in an environment that is collegial, safe, and connected. So the mentorship component of this is that providers participate in our weekly care conference so they bring the examples in a confidential manner of the specific cases that they may be struggling with or having questions around. Often it includes things like um, the patient needs access to additional resources or is seeking support for how to communicate with their family as they're moving through transition. Um, and so our full care team can provide that level of robust mentorship so that then the providers in their home communities can create that network of care, that network of holistic inclusion that so benefits the patients. And so through the Bush investment, it's really gonna launch 
what we envision as a training institute so that we're creating a broader network across the upper Midwest for people to gain those hard medical skills as well as that kind of environment of inclusion. Thank you. Um, the next question is from Jean Tracy. And she asks, what opportunities do you foresee for collaboration with Plymouth that will help Family Tree in advancing this mission? I think there are so many opportunities. I really, really do. And I think we're, we're just at the tip of the iceberg, aren't we? Like we're just <laughs> finding out what the neighborhood is like. We are welcoming people into our building every single day and having conversations with people who are just walking in. You are the experts in this. We'd love to learn from you. We, we already have some uh, partnerships around spaces and being able to have, boy, when we did these tours, we were able to use the parking lot. Thank you, thank you. That means a lot. If you're doing tours for the public, if they have a place where they can park, they feel happy about that. But I think we also have program partnerships. Gosh, our community engagement had a great conversation about doing HIV testing. Can we hand out condoms? Can we do booths together? I, I just think that we are going to march hand in hand forward. And I think there are lots of ways that, that we can partner in supporting your work as well. Thank you, Deborah. And, oh, there was something from Peg Burke. What happened to it? I don't know. I read it. Went. It was pretty, it was pretty kind, Peg. Thank you. <laughs> okay, good. You can comment without, okay, even though it's, it's gone. It was That's a good. very nice comment from our dear friend, Peg, who, who has given us so, so much advice and cheers and championing. So thank you. <laughs> Great. And we have another question from John Humphrey. Um, and before that, I want to say, I have a comment. I would love to take credit for finding these people, but I can't take that credit um, because it wasn't me. It was actually one, another member, Bryce Hamilton. So I just wanted to be sure that I remember to thank Bryce for finding you or for setting this up. I'm only hosting. I can't take credit for anything else. So thank you. Thank you, Bryce Hamilton. And now the question from John Humphrey. Given your amazing success in reducing suicidal tendencies in your patients, do you provide any direct suicide reduction or prevention counseling or other care? That is a great question again. Um, and something I failed to mention on the virtual tour is that we actually have a thousand square feet of integrative health and therapeutic space in our new facility. And we have um, signed a lease with Transcend Psychotherapy who are experts in delivering psychotherapy in our LGBTQ community in, um, in a trauma-centered way. So really working with people who have experienced trauma and applying expert therapeutic modalities to um, help people move through that experience of trauma and towards wellness that they choose. Um, so Transcend Psychotherapy is open they are fully functional in the building. They are partners and contractors of Family Tree, but their own private practice. They offer sliding fee scale as well as bill insurance. And then the integrative health space in the new Family Tree facility will also allow us to offer additional uh, healing services like acupuncture, body work, craniosacral therapy, which are services that our patients and clients have directly told us they want. And so we hope that by March, we will have secured the additional contractors to complete the integrative health space services. Um, and again, a direct result of both our patients telling us what they need, us listening and responding as a broader community, and then having the physical space in this new facility to deliver on that promise. Okay. Um, I have a question. I absolutely have a comment. Um, so I, I'm a retired nurse. So what I think you're doing is, is really the best of God's work. I just have to say, I'm really impressed. And um, in healthcare, the people that are the most, there are some people that are very um, inexpensive to take care of. 
because they have everything in place. You know, they, they have a support system. They have lots of resources and um, they're not facing any kind of big prejudice. And so they're in and out, you know, they're, they're just like, okay, here's what's wrong. Give me a pill or a treatment and I'm off. But the people that you're dealing with are many times the most expensive to, to care for, I think, because you have all these, um, in addition to the primary situation, whatever that may be, they're dealing with prejudice and um, all kinds of other problems. So I'm, I'm very impressed that you are able to do this and maintain financially viable. Um, that's, that's wonderful. And I, I guess that I'm, this is kind of a, <clears throat> when, when, where did your clients generally get care before you existed? And I'm guessing that their experience wasn't very positive. Well, you've alluded to that a little bit. If you wanted to say more about that, you go ahead, but I love that comment and Myra, just your connection as a nurse and, you know, knowing and understanding kind of the depth of community-based care. Um, and, you know, one of the, one of the, I think, profound opportunities for Family Tree to kind of continue to deepen our impact is um, our work in moving people out of poverty. So really directly connecting um, Family Tree's direct services to supporting folks experiencing poverty to move towards um, a more resourced life. And we actually received funding from the Constellation Fund because of the demonstrated impact that Family Tree's services have directly on um, moving folks out of poverty. We also have some demonstrated uh, financial and kind of economic savings resulting from our care in the communities we serve. So it's been demonstrated that Family Tree actually saves the state and taxpayers just shy of $7 for every dollar invested in things like averting unintended pregnancies, reducing um, co-occurring kind of chronic uh, health issues that would land folks in the ER, um, mm -hmm. and working with folks who are most on the margins, like you say, Myra. Mm -hmm. So there are some, I think, demonstrated economic impacts that, that honestly Family Tree could strengthen both how we talk about that and share that information, as well as I think how our broader health system thinks about quality, um, you know, upfront investment and the longer term savings to, to our um, public health infrastructure on a whole. Thank you. Um, we have another question from John Humphrey. Given your amazing success in reducing suicidal tendencies in your patients, do you provide any direct suicide reduction or preventive prevention counseling or other care? I think you've talked about that a little bit, but maybe there's more to say. Yeah, I think we um, I think we got that question and, and are yeah. excited to share that we have transcend psychotherapy in our integrative health right. space. Um, yes, really thrilled. I yes. did see that there was a question from John asking about a reading list for creating a great oh, yes. environment for LGBTQ youth at Plymouth. Yes. And John, I put my email up as an answer to your question. I typed it in so you can copy it out. It's ddenoyles at familytreeclinic.org. I'd love to connect um, with our amazing health education department who can provide <laughs> all kinds of resources to, to making an environment where everyone feels included. Um, I wanted to uh, just make one comment about your building. Uh, this, I mean, well, more than one comment. I, I think it's a gorgeous building. Two things I noticed. One is the lab is way better than you had 50 years ago, much better. And also a weird little thing. When I go to the clinic, um, the rooms often have windows, but the blinds are always drawn, almost always drawn. And so I love that you have windows that have that film over them so that you get the light. It's, that's a nice touch, I thought. Well, when you come over to visit, uh, we'll show you around and you'll see how many times you've been in a health clinic where you need a ball of yarn to unroll so that you can oh, find yeah. your way back out. Uh -huh. um, we have that straight shot corridors, they're ambulatory, they're, they're just amazing. It feels so different than any health clinic you've been in. Yeah, 
That's it's a beautiful building. So, oh, let's see. I don't know if there's any more questions. We have a couple minutes left. Oh, John Humphrey says thanks to Deborah. And um, well, you mentioned a couple names at the beginning, Carla Ekdahl and somebody else. And I didn't quite catch what their contributions were, their role in all of this. Yes, Carla Ekdahl and John Beatty, who are um, two, you know, community leaders in, a, in our community today, co-founded Family Tree in 1971. Ah. Hmm. And in fact, oh. just a quick aside, you know, the building gives us just so many opportunities to honor our history. And so the atrium will be named for Carla, the Carla Ekdahl atrium. Oh, good. So both of them will have a name in there some, somewhere. Okay, well, I guess we are about finished. If anybody else has a quick question, you get to ask it now, or if you have any closing comments, Deborah or Alyssa. I think everyone should come up with a question and march across the street uh -huh. and ask it, ask it to us at the <laughs> atrium desk. We're there always sitting down there waiting to welcome you. <laughs>